My name is Klaus. I'm from Germany, so excuse my bad English. Oh dear. So we got a German on the ladder with us. Yeah. All right, that's good. We just had D-Day. We're not going to hold it against you. <laughs> Welcome to England. Glad you much. made it, and you're not on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> now listen. So Klaus, you're a Christian, are you not? Yes, of course. And you've grown up as a Christian. Yes. But you work with Muslims, don't you? Yes. So you know a lot about Islam, don't you? Yeah. You've had a lot of training, you've had a lot of teaching, you've studied not only the Holy Book, you've also studied their Prophet Muhammad. Of course. You know quite a bit about Muhammad, don't you? Yes, of course. And you want to talk about him today? Yes. Because you have a problem with him, don't you? Well, not so much with him. Actually, we, in Germany, we do have a problem with the Muslims. No. We have the problem with the Muslims that they will not defend Muhammad. They will run. Oh. We want to challenge the Muslims in Germany to defend their prophet, uh, supposedly. Let's see. But they run. Oh. Muslims, will you defend your prophet Muhammad? Will you say, will you show us that he's a pro the, like the example for mankind? I can't see Look, any it's, here. It's okay. like in Germany here. Yeah, so what, what we actually need to do, like we tried, we tried to speak about whether or not Muhammad is a prophet. Because there's biblical criteria, God gave us 14 criteria in the Bible. What is a prophet? Like being called by God and so on. But Muhammad meets none of them. Okay, so the angel was the emissary of God by squeezing him and saying, yeah. recite, isn't that calling by God? But well, it actually didn't even work. He said, Ikra, but he couldn't read. It said, Ikra, couldn't read. You know, the word of God, what God says, it does. When Jesus says, rise to a little girl that is dead. Well, to be called by God, you have to preach God's word and receive it first from God, which he never did. He never meets God. He never spoke okay. to Well, actually, we do have a lot of biblical criteria. We also have Islamic criteria. Muhammad doesn't meet the biblical criteria. Okay, but also, like, okay, that's very quickly, because I have to, to, to make a suggestion how we can help the Muslims defend Muhammad. So, one is called by God. What is prophesying in the name of the Lord? What you showed before, okay. he didn't do. That name is Yahweh, so, the name that God spoke to Moses that will be his name forever. And you can't find that. Zero times, zero times. It's not on his lips, it's not in the hoodie. Number two, okay. Strike one, strike two. So, and of course, God's word comes to him. God's word comes to a prophet. It's not just some sound, some ringing bell. God's word, which we see in the Bible, is a person. And which also Muslims should know is a person. He uh -huh. comes to a prophet. You're talking about Jesus. Of aren't course. You? Oh, there's a catchy one. So three, strike three, so, go ahead. Well, prophets prophesy. There is no prophecy in the Quran. Well, sometimes he tried to say something with the Romans, but if you look it up, it's a false prophecy. There is no true prophecy in the Quran. In the Bible, there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of detailed prophecy which came true. No. All right, so number four, strike four. Yeah, when prophecies do not come true, and Muhammad did supposedly prophesy things that did not come true, like people barefoot building towers. Well, some people are building towers, but they're definitely not barefoot. They're the richest people in the world. So when prophecies not come true, the Bible says these false prophets should die, should die. So Muhammad, according to Moses, should have been killed as a false prophet. Well, actually, let me back you up. In Deuteronomy 18, we're gonna show you right now. In Deuteronomy 18, he said, be careful of prophets who come in the name of other gods. And what's the name of the god that Muhammad used? Well, what's it's his name? La Ilaha, or Allah, right? It's not even a name, it's just a title. And then what does it say in verse 19 of 20 of Deuteronomy 18? Are you listening? If a prophet comes in the name of another god, he must be put to death. Verse 20, there it is right there. So you see right there. So God is very clear that any prophet who does not come in his name must be put to death. Which is? This Chapter 18 of Deuteronomy, verse 18, 19, and 20. So did he come in God's name? Did Muhammad come in God's name? We're talking about Muhammad. Okay, he's not a Muslim. Let's continue on. 
Don't worry about it. Because yeah. he'll, 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 okay. he'll try to get your mind off. Let's actually, actually already, you already answered it. The next one is, when prophecies come true, and like, then it, you have to listen, well, in which name is it prophesied? And it's prophesied in, not in the name of Yahweh. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 13, it says, God will test you whether or not you will obey the Lord your God. But if someone comes in a different name, don't, don't trust him. And Muhammad came in the name of Allah, which is, as you said, not even the name. It's the title. Yeah, okay. So, then something else. Nothing happens ever without notice. So if God sends a prophet that is totally changing everything, she, he should have no, given us a notice through the prophets. He did not. In all of the Bible, there is nothing about Muhammad. No Muhammad, no Ahmed, no unlettered prophet. Nothing. And so on. So we could go So what, what are we on now? Number five or number six? I think that was number seven. Seven, okay. So have you noticed, in every category up to seven, he fails in every category. Number eight. What's number eight? Okay, number eight is consistency with scriptures. As you also Whoa. said, it has to be consistent with, with scripture. You cannot say, you like, when Jesus comes and says, you shall not swear oaths. And whatever you say, you say yes means yes. You say no means no. Everything else comes from the Satan, comes from the evil one. And if you come centuries later and say, well, yeah, you can, you can break your oath and you can, you can lie to your spouse. Jesus says this message of lie, this message of false oath comes from the Satan. And also the life of the prophet has some impact. No, no, but nobody's perfect. But when David did something wrong, he repented. When he lost the devil after a woman, he repented. Muhammad made it a rule for himself after he lost it. So there's number 11, no, no other gospel. There cannot be another gospel, but Muhammad brought something totally different. It's the way of salvation. It's not just the message, it's the way of salvation. Okay, so you say he came with another salvation. Salvation. This way you do it by yourself. This way God does it for you. Two yeah. completely different salvation. And in the Bible, in order to protect us from false prophets, God gave us the principle of the two or three witnesses. You have to have witnesses in order to be true. And Muhammad did not have any witnesses when he was in that cave. No one was there. And then we, you have the father and the son who does not profess and proclaim the father and the son is not a true prophet. And you have to confess the son coming into the flesh. God coming into the flesh. If you don't accept this, okay, you are false All prophet. of these you support in scripture. You have the Islamic criteria. Those also hey, Let's go zero. through more quickly. What are the Islamic criteria? Truthfulness. Well, well, was Muhammad truthful? Well, he supported lie to your spouse. This is not truthful. Trustworthy. Was he trustworthy? When he came and saw a naked woman in the house, did he go away and say, Oh, forgive me for my last full uh, uh, look. No, he didn't. He said, oh, so then the reliable transmission. You have to say what you hear. But Muhammad, according to the Islam, said even what he heard from Satan. Okay, these are the satanic verses, chapter 53, yeah. 19 and 20. You have to have high intelligence. Well, I don't want to be offenses, offensive, but there are some, some of these that are so laughable. Then you have to be honorable. like to marry a six-year-old and to have sex with a nine-year-old child is not honorable, and he was it's 53. shameful, okay. yeah, we it's was, shameful. That is not a model for today. Yeah, and you should be victorious. Why? Well, he was overcome by a Jewish lady, by a Jewish lady, so he was not victorious in that. So then you should be, you should, one thing Muhammad had, one thing Muhammad had, of all this, altogether, 24 criteria, he had, a mole. He had a mole on the back. The seal of the prophet. Why? Well, I, I, it's a kind of I'm a sorry, tumor. I, that's a new one. I've not heard that one. Yeah. Do all have, prophets have moles? Well, no. Why should that of, be well, a criteria like, then? I never heard that, but, but, the, but the, the Islamic sources say okay. you this have to have that. that. The Islamic sources, you have to have this mole. So Abram yeah. had a mole, Moses had a mole, Jesus had a mole. Never hey. heard that, never heard that. Can you see how ridiculous that is? But the most important criteria is this, and it's in the Quran. 
Jesus, at the age of little baby, he was able to speak from the cradle. Jesus, in chapter 3, verse 49, he resuscitated the dead. Could Muhammad do that? No. He took birds and made them fly in the air. Could Muhammad do that? No. He gave sight to the blind. Could Muhammad do that? No. He gave the crippled be able to walk. Could Muhammad do that? No. In every major category, Muhammad failed. And here we get the best one. Did Muhammad sin? Of course he did. And there's where do you get a, that? There's from the Quran, but there's just one person who never sinned. So I think when I read wait, all wait, of wait. this, where in the Quran do you get that? Chapter 48, verse 1 and 2. Forgive the sins that you have done and the sins that you continue to do. So Muhammad continued to sin even as a prophet. Did Jesus sin? He never ever sinned. Because and where do you get that in the Quran? Chapter 19, verse 19. A pure son. The righteous son. So every major criteria, Jesus comes out on top, even in the Quran. What's his name again? Jesus. What's his name again? Jesus. Jesus! Every time we do a comparison, thanks for your comparison, Jesus comes out on top. God bless you.